So at this moment, you're probably pretty curious about what today's video is going to be about. So I uh, decided, because everyone's at home trying to deal with this COVID-19 outbreak and they're uh, self-isolating, I'd make another video this morning and try to entertain you somehow. I don't know. There's my fingers playing air piano. Um, <clears throat> so this is a, uh, a setup I had made for me for, uh, for holding a pocket watch mainly. Um, and timing the pocket watch. So what I needed was a microphone. This is a uh, microphone I bought off of uh, eBay, Amazon, somewhere, right? And I cut off the headphone part, right? And this lead left me with just the microphone part. I had a friend of mine who was a, a machinist, and I got him to make this for me. So this is a locking nut on this side, and it swivels over the other side, and there's two holes here, and those are for putting a pin in to lock it into, this, into these positions. So if you're doing uh, dial up and, and uh, a pennant, pennant left uh, or dial down or whatever, you just swing that along and put the pin in. Turns out there's enough friction here that I don't really need to uh, put the pin in for this. It works quite well. So didn't don't bother doing it. It's got a nice little stand on it here. Um, I believe I made a, another video about this, but it's not about this particular device today it's about the timing software so the mic on this is on the top there's a little hole there and it slides in like this so I could have glued this in into position right to make uh, life easier but um, but I haven't because I've also used this mic which is actually a little bit more sensitive and it's just a it's an iPhone headphone jack so I cut the uh, again cut the phones off the end here and and uh, I've done this before. I just took, took, put some paper, I think it was paper towel or something. I, you probably could use a piece of foam. And I just rest that there and then I lay the, the watch on top uh, like so, uh, like this. And then I plug this in and I have a USB. Let me just show you this because I had problems with uh, amplitude on this, like actually uh, beefing it up. So I have a, a, a quarter inch an eighth inch jack um, to a USB cable I can stick right into my computer I get almost zero latency on that and then I also run another program that helps my uh, Windows 10 it, it beefs up the actual amplitude um, so you don't have to go into your uh, computer files and start playing with the uh, dot the control files in your computer to do that so but that's not about this today so so I managed to get good amplitude out of this so I don't have to have all these amplifier configurations I've seen on the internet, people building amplifiers and all that kind of stuff. So you can do this without without having to do that. So you can do this without having to do that, see? So so what I do to hold the uh, the watch, this is a Hamilton, uh, it's a um, grade, let me see, I looked this up a little while ago, it's a grade uh, 978 uh, Hamilton watch. Um, it's a 17 uh, jewel watch. Uh, they were open face. Uh, there were quite a few of them made. 24,500 made back in the day. Uh, the value is, let me see, look this thing up. Somewhere between 151 bucks and uh, as an average value, high of high of 185 and retail of 279. It actually keeps really really good time. And if I you just look at the I've got this uh, catalog price guide for pocket watches. That's pretty cool. And I got a bunch of earmarks where I've looked things up. So if I look up Hamilton um, and I look up the, uh, these are the railroad grade pocket watch cases, by the way. But, but if I look up the Hamilton and a uh, 978, nine, where is this bugger? So there it is there. So Hamilton 978, some details about this 17 joule movement and Back in 2016, this was low of 125 and a high of 325. So, so not bad. It's kind of close to what I was saying. But anyway, so this book is kind of cool. So you can look up all your pocket watches and movements and know the average price of the thing. It's got all sorts of good stuff in it. So it's a complete price guide to watches. And I'm sure there's a 20, 2020 version of this, but uh, really excellent book. Um, I also have a book called Illustrated Manual of American Watch Movements. Anyway, that's this uh, this particular pocket watch. So, so setting this up, what I would do just to set this microphone configura configuration up is 
I'd, I have to. I'd like to figure out a better way of of doing this so it doesn't look so amateur. But for now, I've got rubber bands that will hold the pocket watch in place. Um, this one it says Mexico in it. <laughs> the product produce of Mexico. This is probably used to hold a lobster claw or something. Anyway, so and I've also found this microphone. You know, it depends on where you put the watch to get the best. Um, signal for this um, uh, piping it into the software so uh, so you slip the watch in make sure that the, the pennant is facing outward because in this particular thing as I rotate it it'll hit the pennant this will the pennant will hit here and then I'm kind of screwed so so what I do is I just slip it in like this very carefully and the aluminum is is a good material it's not gonna it's less chance of it marking the back of the watch it's a softer material so it, it might scuff it, but I don't think so. So, uh, I don't know. That sounds like uh, Mr. Trump would say something like that. It might work, but I don't think so. Many people say it could scuff it. Anyway, so it's in position right now. So, there's, um, so I want to show you some timing software I have to, uh, to look at this. So, i got to point my camera at my computer for a second. So, hang on. Actually, before you hang on, what I'll do is is I time in five different positions. So this is a dial up and dial down, and the and the elastics hold the watch nicely, right? Dial down, and then dial sideways like this. So and actually, if I was really smart, what I'd do is move this watch around so the pennant is is does it work that way? Let me think here, because I got dial sideways and then I got Pen it up, pen it down, pen it left, pen it right, pen it out the door and go see the cat. So that'd be pen it up. So there is a pen it left position. So let me see. I'm trying to remember. Let me just put it like this again. So let's see if I can get a signal. So make sure it's nice and safe. And I will figure out another design for this so it holds it better. If you guys have any suggestions other than using rubber bands, I'm all in. All in, Jerry. I'm telling you. Jerry. That's my impersonation of uh, the Newman. Hello, Jerry. Hello, Newman. Anyway, the, the Seinfeld one's really bad. Oh. <clears throat> Hello, Jerry. That's not too bad, though. <laughs> For your entertainment. <laughs> so. So I have a guitar pick here in case I get really bored. I'm going to pick up a guitar and play. Someone keeps asking me to play some music at the end of these or play some more music and make a music video, but I've made tons of music videos. So Anyway, so I will rotate this. The software will tell me to do pennant. Uh, it'll tell me to do um, dial up, dial down, and then dial sideways kind of thing and, and uh, pennant up and whatever. So... I'll move this into five positions and I will uh, be measuring the timing on it. So let me just go to the software and pause this for a second. All right, back at it. So this is the eTimer software. Um, the, there's a bunch of features in this uh, particular software, but I won't go through all that. So there's a setting page here where you, uh, where you can set the, for example, the uh, lever escapement, the uh, train speed. 18,000 beats per per hour. Um, the lift angle of 52. I've got an unlock threshold. I'll show you that in a second of 8%, which is pretty good. Um, I'm saying positional timing is five, and you can actually set the sequence, which is dial up, uh, pen it up, dial down, pen it down, and pen it left. Um, and then positional position average time of 12 seconds and stabilization time of four and a whole bunch of other stuff pre-tick muting and blah 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 so and my input microphone is this I just have your sound device microphone your sampling rate and I'm using mic in as opposed to line in and there's a bunch of other calibration factors and everything else so I think Mark who's a pretty uh, smart guy he's the guy that showed me um, the software initially I thought this is pretty cool so so I got the software because of him. I think it, it's not cheap, but it's very good because you can actually look at your the signal on your uh, on your watch, and uh, you can you can 
do some pretty cool analysis here and determine whether you've got problems with your gears and all kinds of other stuff too. Um, so when I run this, if I click the button up here in the corner, um, I'm going to do run it in five positions. So it's going to do a positional average. If I'm just running it like this, if I talk, I've got filtering on right now, so it's not too bad when I talk. Um, but if I uh, if I didn't have filtering on, you'd see a lot more waveforms. So I've got this set with an unlock threshold of 8%. Seems to be good uh, going across the signal. Um, the amplitude in this uh, movement is uh, is 299, which is really good. I've got up here in the corner, I've got averaging set. So up here is, I've got averaging set here, and I've got a trace set here as well. Um, I think I can magnify that trace, but I never really look at the trace, the dots. Um, I could learn from them on this with this software, I'm sure, but uh, I haven't gotten into that yet from this particular software package. Um, and over in the corner there, there's microphone boosts and all kinds of other stuff. So, so it's running at 300 uh, degree amplitude, which is pretty high. And I'm going to compare that to the other software I have, and a beat error of of 1.52, which is doesn't seem to be that good. Um, it also down in the bottom here, you don't see a lot of it, but this is um, more information of how the accumulated rate, the deviation down here for measured time and all kinds of stuff down there. So, so if I did a positional run on it, I it tells me to stabilize it with the uh, dial down. So I have to basically flip the watch uh, dial down, which I'm doing right now. I showed you the device I had earlier. So just flip that dial down and then you run it, you hit go and it does the analysis dial down and it's minus, let me see, it'll stabilize in a second, I think. Um, and it's going to give me a reading in a few seconds. So I'll just kind of mumble a bit. So there's the first reading dialed down. Now it's telling me to do pennant up, right? So I do end up having to, I do end up having to flip this around to flip the, the actual watch this way to get it pennant up, right? So sorry for the showing you the screen. Um, but the, I don't think the videos would be as interesting if they were professionally made. <laughs> I'm just saying, okay? I'm just saying. So, so pennant up would be PU, would be in this position here. That's pennant up there. So, so I'm going to measure this pennant up now. Hit run in the corner, over here in the corner. I hope you can see that still. There we go. And it's uh, running pretty good. Minus 18, minus 20. And then it's going to say dial down. So I can just flip this whole, rotate this whole device downward. So now I've got the, uh, I got the uh, pocket watch in the scuba diving position with the dial down. So, and I'll just turn this on again and see what it runs at. And there we go, and then I have pennant down. So in this case here, I have to flip it so the crown is facing downward. So which I'm doing. And run that. And the beat error is awful on this, but I found that if I flip my threshold over here, this little green line right there, if I take that threshold line and I move it up, the beat error seems to be better. So it's kind of, it's a bit wonky. So that way. So uh, and now it wants me to do pennant left. So like I said before, you got to turn this so that the crown is facing left. You know, and then you have to rotate the uh, my little device there so that it's uh, it's facing uh, sideways. So we just do that. Make sure I got 
good amplification so effectively I'll show you here in a second kinda it looks like this right so it's sideways like that and the lighting's not great here I should put it on automatic lighting but there it is there so it's sideways and then just measure it like this that's pennant left and again you can define those positions yourself so I'm sure talking doesn't help either but the audio filter seems to be working it's a high pass filter and uh, it seems to be working pretty good I just noticed I spent I had the word Hamilton H-M-I-L-T-O-N good lord I can't spell and then it just asked me to save the data so I go yeah good good enough to go now if you look down in the corner here there's my readings so I got all the readings and all the different positions and there's quite a few variations here so if I wanted to get into this uh, I'd probably jump into that pocket watch and start um, looking at the gears and looking at maybe there's pivots that are a bit worn or something causing this uh, there could be gear irregular uh, irregularities in this as well these old watches sometimes they, like these this watch is from the 1920s I think and they they're not going to be like a, a watch is like an actual watch so like if I were to put my nice Seiko watch in here uh, you'd see different rates but anyway it's telling me that I got down here there's delta rates and I've got the mean on the bottom so if I look at the mean I'm at uh, 1.44 seconds per day which is pretty good my beat error looks like it's pretty crappy but but I measured this on some other software which I'll show you in a second and the beat error didn't look that bad Amplitude's pretty good. 282 measured to five positions, um, and I got a delta and amplitude of of 66. So best to worst, I think, is that delta and amplitude because I've got a two with pennant down. I've got 244. So so it depends on the balance and the weight and and uh, you know maybe the balance isn't. Uh, I haven't. Uh, uh, what's the word? I haven't regu not regulated, but you know, balanced the balance, right? So, poised it. That's the word. So I haven't poised the balance properly, maybe, and that's causing that. So, so that's that piece of software. So, so I've done this one. Let me just see if I can bring up another piece of software here. I'll pause this for a second. So this piece of software is called WatchOscope. WatchOscope uh, version 1.2 and I've got it set so the parameters again in this software your beat rate your lift angle uh, averaging period and setting period um, and it's got a scale so you can see how it's doing and plot raw watch sound instead of analyzing the ticks um, and this one here uh, digital filtering I have at uh, 400 kilohertz to 12 400 hertz to 1200 kilohertz so that's not really that good filtering I don't think that's a pretty uh, should be a higher range probably a narrower range maybe I should try that so let me just set that and then when I hit record on this one I can look at the waveform when I'm doing this or or I can look at the, I just record it and look at the data being plotted so I'm gonna do this one and see what happens um, this software is I think free I think I got it free and I'm not sure if I when I talk whether it's gonna be a problem so it, it it just reads the data and then adjusts the levels and verifying the rate and does other things. So so it's just getting the uh, audio data from the watch right now, the, the tick data. i got to go to my golf voice right now. So undetected. So i got to shut up maybe. So as you as you can see, the uh, the ticks in this they're scattered all over the place, right? So somehow it's not reading this properly. Um, that's why the software is free. The amplitude is 148, 150. Um, I saw that earlier. Now I'm not sure. I don't think this is the true amplitude because this watch was running extremely strong with a great swing on it. Um, the rate is 33 minutes per day which is like this is not accurate at all uh, so 
I wouldn't give this software the highest uh, highest vote. Um, watch a scope 1.2. Um, it was working at one time when I first got it. I was confident, and then I got E Timer, and and it's like night and day. Like E Timer is a 500 500 buck piece of software, so this here is free. So it was like someone told me you're gonna get if you, if you get a free lawyer, you get cheap advice, right? So so this is kind of poopy. So I won't uh, go any further in this. So that's this software. It doesn't do much more than that. So I'm gonna stop this right now, and. Then I'm, I've got a uh, another piece of software uh, that's not too bad, and this software works pretty well. So I got to set this up, and just give me a second while I set this up. I think I can pause, right? All right, this software is called Teco Print, um, and it's got some, it's got various features on it, but. Um, you can select your trace mode on this software and you can go you want accuracy which will show you the dots and I'll do that for now down here I set the beats per minute to 1800 beats per minute um, and the lift angle at 52 um, and also you can put in watch data here I just put in a Hamilton 12s which is wrong it's a 16s so it doesn't matter I'm just testing this right now got a freestyle shark and some other Chinese winter watch and everything else so if I go Back to my start, and I think I got to shut up for this one too because it's going to be pretty loud. Um, there's this is not positional, although you could probably you just rotate my my little stand here to the various positions, and you're going to get positional data. So I might do that while I'm running it, but you let it collect some data for a second and then start, and you'll see the beats. And it also goes, it just shows you the beats, which and the separation between the beats, which gives you a good idea what the bead error might be. If it's a straight line you get a perfect bead error. If it's sort of a huge separation you don't. So this is my last reading by the way. 12 seconds per day. The bead error here and the amount of amplitude is 288. So so if I hit start I'll watch this here. Uh, down here. And it's locked in. And there, so it's starting to collect the data as you can see. And there's my beat error, which is not great, but this just sort of shows you that the beat error is, in fact, um, like that. So, whenever you see sinusoidal swing patterns like that, and that could be uh, issues with gear. So, And it's tracking at about 14 seconds per day, positive, 8 seconds. Um, the other thing with this software, if you remember, I had the rate was my averaging rate on the other software. Let me go look at it for a second here. Uh, was it was 1.44 seconds per day averaging. So this is telling me I'm running around 9, 10 seems to be bumping up to that more often um, so that's that you can also uh, do some times on your axis here times one times two it just changes makes the axis more drastic if you're uh, if you want to scare yourself and tell you that your watch is way off so if you don't you can just basically set the axis at 0.7 for example and when you slide this over it kind of catches up with the ticking as you can see so if I go to axis again and put that back to uh, put that back to one, makes more sense. Um, and then it just continues on the bottom as it's riding up. So so that gives you that. And then you've got uh, this this here is your integration time. So so data integration time and your data axis. And then if you can go from accuracy to an actual trace, that's your trace. Um, and the scale changes in the side here, which so it's right now it's minus 10 and plus 10 because it's kind of fitting in there, um, and that's that. So you can turn that off as well. And too bad I didn't put 16s in there, but so it's looked it looks like this watch is running around 10 to 12 seconds per day plus positive side, right? So not too bad. So that's the software I found. This is on a Samsung Galaxy 
Note tablet, and it runs on Android only, so you can't get. Um, I think I'm lying. I think you can get Ticker Print for the uh, for the iPhone. I could try that in a few minutes, but anyway, it, I think it runs on iPhone as well. But I find it really good for for the Android. So this is actually very good software. So I I would highly recommend this software. It only costs you like five bucks or something. So to regulate your watch, if you're you're in a budget. You know, you can't afford the e-timer software and you're not really trying to analyze the signal, then that's pretty good. So, this also turns green when your data is better. Probably talking doesn't help, like I said. Uh, maybe the amplitude on the mic needs to be better on this, but it is giving me pretty accurate reading. So that's Tickle Print, which is a pretty cool software. Um, and again, if I were to flip this sideways here and do pennant, pennant left and see what happens. It's pretty consistent. I'll just swing this to make the uh, put it upside down here. See what happens here. Yeah, it's not too bad. I think it's the integration is you don't see the drastic changes because of the integration time. So let's sit, flip to accuracy here and look at that. Yeah, it's uh, basically 10, 10, 11 seconds per day. So it's not giving you a, a really detailed analysis, but if you want to just quickly check whether your watch is working quite well, then that's good. So 2.9 millisecond, uh, millisecond uh, beat error, which is not great. For this but it is an old pocket watch so so that's that piece of software so this software is from um, it's a uh, Frederick constant I uh, in Geneva I made a video on this software already and I'm using the exact same stand as I had before for uh, for measuring this with the same mic this comes with a separate mic that uh, is pretty cool that you can just grab the uh, the device with, but uh, I'm just going to see what the results are here. So it seems to have pretty good um, mic uh, volume control on this software as well. So it's filtering out me talking, I think. So it's saying my beat error is 0.3 milliseconds, which is really really good, but I might not believe it. Um, its uh, amplitude is 300, which is Kind of where I was with the other software, it's giving me the same same relative amplitude on the uh, on the e timer software. My my uh, amplitude was uh, 282 averaged, um, so I was getting as high as on the amplitude as 310 and 296, and the pen and up position and the dial down position I was getting 310, which is pretty high. So right now it's saying 4.9 seconds per day. Uh, which is pretty good. So that's uh, the software is actually pretty pretty decent. I still have to look at what the stability means because a zero, if you were doing running five seconds per day and these were five second increments, maybe that's the five seconds per day. So and then it asks me to start or restart or save or restart. So I'm going to restart it again and have another look at the data. So it's 5.3 90.3 millisecond meter, which I kind of don't believe. It's too accurate. So once again, it's connect, collecting the data, and maybe it collects the data when I talk. In the meantime, I'm going to advertise for Starbucks. I'm going to have a Starbucks sip of my coffee while we're waiting. So you should always have a coffee running in the background while you're uh, doing watch work, so you can get all shaky. And this is actually decaf right now. So I don't, I don't think there's any great things you can talk about while you're. Um, while you're collecting data. <laughs> it's like, okay, what am I going to talk about while I'm collecting data? How about nothing? Uh, is that clear? i got two screens running here, and if I show the screen of me making the video, it's a screen of a screen, and it'll go all crazy on me. So, it's still collecting data. So it's, uh, 
it is a data collecting hog. So this is now saying plus 12, plus 13 seconds per day. It's kind of consistent what what I was what the readings were before on the on TicoPrint. So TicoPrint showed me around this reading as well, um, an amplitude of 299, and still has a bead error of 0.3. So, and this is a this uh, uh, Frederick Constant is a is a watch company. If we do that. Drop it down. Uh, you can't see it. I have another video online. You can watch that though. So there's a little alligator attack, and you need the Jaws music in the background while he's dum 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 dum. Dum, dum. All right, that's enough foolish entertainment. So this is running 10.6 seconds per day fast, right, which is very good, um, if I believe it again. Uh, so comparing it to the eTimer, the eTimer software was the one that is, is actually the most accurate if you do it positionally. If I don't do it positionally and just look at my dial up, I think was the position, the eTimer software said that, that I was running minus three seconds per day dial up. So this does not, and the dial down was 24 seconds per day. So not sure who to believe now, okay? So if I save this, just hit save like that. And then it, adds, it says add that to an existing watch. And and again, it's 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 a 16S, not a, not as 12S, I made a mistake. So. I just can click on that and say save that and then basically write a description down here but that's those are the results um, and then if I want to have a look at that later on I can go down to the Hamilton watch I was looking at and you can put a new picture in there and all kinds of other wonderful stuff uh, and service information you can put in there and these are the measurements down here that I had so these two measurements are the most accurate I think so plus 13 seconds per day or plus 10 seconds per day amplitude 298 amplitude 300 so this software actually is not too bad I just got this the other day it comes with the clip um, this is just a microphone turns out this microphone clip works with my other software too so if I'm doing a a watch I can clip that on and 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 uh, do a watch right so and maybe I should do that for you and just show you how that's done so uh, I decided not to, <laughs> just in case you're wondering. But if you look at the uh, Swiss Connect over here, um, the ticker print right there, uh, it's kind of washed out a bit. But and then the eTimer software, um, you're looking at probably uh, around 130 bucks US for this software. Uh, this software is is uh, probably 10 bucks maybe it's a it's an app running on the android uh, android computer so it's and it's pretty darn good it's trying to measure stuff right now i should actually stop it eh? so so this is like has so far been the best i've had it for a long time um, of these two platforms because uh, you can actually look at the ticks and look at the beat area you've got and then start playing with that um, but if you want to go high-end, then you need to have the eTimer software because this stuff is is really good. You're looking at the signal and you're being able to determine whether you've got locking and unlocking uh, air, uh, problems with your pallet jewel, your pallet stones, and all kinds of things you can read on this particular software here. So, so I'd recommend if you're going to get serious about timing your watch and your watches after maintenance that you get the eTimer. But these other software packages are are not too bad either. So, so uh, that's the video for today. Just a quick analysis of of that. Uh, let me just point down for a second at my setup again. Let's try to. Pop. So as I was saying before, I was uh, in a never-ending hunt for for microphones to measure uh, amplitude. Um, and uh, this little unit here that uh, a friend of mine built for me is perfect. Uh, I could never have built this myself. I'm not a machinist, and he's got some pretty serious gear. So I do have to figure out a better way. Of, maybe I have to figure out a better way of, of, of fixing the mic on here, um, other than rubber bands. Um, and it, this does seem to work well, and it keeps the watch there. And it's double double rubber bands. I've got a 
a rubber band and I've got what we call a hot standby in case I get a bad failure rate on this rubber band will be compensated by the other rubber band which is in hot standby mode and if I really wanted to I could add a third rubber band just in case I have two band failures and need the third one to recover the system so there's some stupid stuff to talk about right so this is a Seiko Prospect uh, a baby tuna uh, diver uh, pretty cool watch pretty cool movement um, in this and actually to do the time time analysis on this it's this is a better connector so I just do that for watches so I'm really glad I got this software I can use this connector though with my e-timer uh, software as well um, I just stick it into the uh, cord I showed you earlier that's a USB this one here it's a USB uh, jack and I stick it into it's a uh, it's an 8 inch, uh, eight inch eight, sorry not 8 inch, 8 millimeter is it 8 millimeter jack? I think so 8 millimeter jack um, I'm not sure of the millimeters on this thing. Anyway, I used to use quarter inch jacks for music and eight inch jacks, but I think this is an eight millimeter jack. So this works really well. I stick it in to this, put it in my computer, and then I can use my e-timer software to, to see how accurate this watch is. Um, this thing also has got uh, audio. This is audio foam here, uh, and there's a mic in the middle. And so when you put this on, it's pretty good at not hearing anything else like when you're talking so you can be in like a, a a coffee shop or something and 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 test somebody's watch with your with your iPhone so you can grab your grab your iPhone um, like this uh, let me just pull this out like that there's a really nice Hamilton uh, Hamilton watch I picked up recently so um, yeah, you can just grab your iPhone like that and and then plug this into, I've got it's too many cords and cables, but this is a, I had to get an adapter for this, so you can plug it in like that, and then you've got yourself a rig where you can just quickly tell your buddies that they have shitty watches, right? So, um, speaking of shitty watches, let me grab a shitty watch and see how well it does. So this watch I got made in China. It's a skeleton movement. Um, it cost me maybe 25 bucks, I think. Uh, it's so it's not a high-end watch. Uh, it's it's actually fully automatic. It's, I'm just winding it because you can wind it, and I don't think it's hacking. It's just no, it's not hacking. You turn the uh, turn the things like this. So. I actually painted these things red. I took the movement out and painted them red with model paint, and it doesn't work very well because you don't see the contracts, contrast. I took another one and painted it yellow. These buttons uh, don't work at all, so it's, it pretends it's a uh, chronograph, but it's not. And then of course it's automatically wound, and that seems to 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 work fairly well. So so the rotor on the back seems to work okay. Um, the, ch the, the bracelet on this thing is it is stainless steel but it's cheap it's the hollow bracelets cheap bracelet it does have a little snap and a button here so this is the watch you wear when you're worried about getting robbed so I, I bought that because I did a lot of international travel and I was in South America a lot and I was worried in some of the places I went to that I would get robbed so um, I'm in the aerospace business by the way I don't run around uh, doing bad things so so what I do with this is just put this mic as close to the balance as I can get it which is right on this side like that and let's have a look at how well this works I might zoom in there's the Hamilton that's it's actually coming in the mail it's got a salesman case and see-through so I'm gonna analyze this so there's the tick it's ticking away so this again I, I found that this doesn't doesn't really matter whether you talk or not it seems to work really well so before I was taking a bean bag and throwing it over the mic to, to uh, get a clean signal right so let me see if I can zoom in on this a bit so there you go that's not too bad uh, it'd be nice if it was focused right
All right, that's about as focused as you're going to get. So stop complaining. <laughs> Just kidding. So now it says error occurred when processing the watch data. It's because I'm talking and stuff, probably. Or the uh, watch is so cheap it doesn't even want to process the data. So it's uh, working away. Uh, let me see. What do you think the uh, the bead error is going to be on this thing and the rate? It should be interesting if it's really good. I haven't worn this much, so it doesn't have any real wear and tear on it. It's a stamped out Chinese movement. There's no real decoration, but it's a uh, Probably not that bad in movement. Not sure about reliability. Reliability might be crappy on this. Oh, there, it gave me the error again. So I'm going to turn this off, get it working, and turn it on again. So I think I know what my problem was. I had the darn thing set for, uh, it's not auto detect, but I have my frequency set for 18,000. The motor wasn't working. So I'm going to just hit auto detect because I don't know what the frequency is. And the measuring time for 30 seconds. Let's see what happens here. It's a loser error, someone said. The loser error. If you get that joke. So it's telling me it's 21,600, which kind of makes sense for this kind of a movement. So uh, I'm glad I didn't try to check my Seiko out. It would have uh, not understood either. So let's see if this works. There we go, we're in business. So it's an uh, amplitude of 329 degrees, 330 degrees. That's pretty friggin' good. And a beat error of 0.2, which is also pretty good. It's running slightly fast at uh, 8 seconds a day, 8.1 seconds per day. Um, so that's that's actually not that bad data, right? So you can zoom in here now. That's good enough. Anyway, and it says, do I want to save it? Uh, you hit save, add a new watch, and then take a picture of the watch, and away you go. But I'm not going to do any of that. So, so that's it. So, hope you enjoyed this video today. Uh, again, all kinds of different methods of of uh, measuring watch accuracy. Uh, this is pretty cool. So, I don't probably don't need to buy one of those other type of stands for watches. I don't think I've ever seen one like this. So. It was my design, and again, a machinist uh, built it for me, and these mics are really cheap. If you go on eBay, you can pick up one of these mics. They, uh, again, you just let me take off the rubber band safety system here, the RBSS, and that's the Hamilton keeping pretty good time. It's almost time for lunch. I actually haven't had any breakfast yet. So, and again, this mic fits in the slot like this, so we just, it just had to have this slot machined out and uh, I may glue that down at some point in time or just put some general adhesive in there so it just stays in or maybe two-sided tape but it's perfectly flush like this mic it may be up just a little tiny bit but that's so the mic can touch the back of the watch so it seems to work really well um, the Chinese watch actually is pretty good from a movement perspective I was surprised um, uh, I'll have to wear this wear this around people say where'd you get that beautiful watch but the case is actually stainless steel on it and i did another video a long time ago on these watches and trying to beat the crap out of it and then i couldn't so a see-through back on it and uh and uh it's got a decent casket in there and so i've taken it apart a few times like i said i painted the hands i have another version of it where i painted the hands yellow so anyway that's the video for today. hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please give me any comments that you can have. I actually have work to do today. So it's a non-work work day. Um, but I've got this uh, this Hamilton movement that I have that's a scrap movement. Um, but I just wanted it for the fourth wheel in the movement. And I got the whole darn thing. And I don't even know if it's got a crystal on the other side. But, or not a crystal, but a, uh, the face of the watch is there or not. But... I'm going to work on this. i got to make a new balance staff 
and uh, put this thing back together and see if I can get it running and then test the timing on it and away we go and that's uh, and just before I go one more thing uh, I think I showed you this watch in another video the Hebdomas eight day watch so I haven't wound this for three or three or four days and it's still running quite well um, and it's got just always press the button on the top here when you uh, put the lid back on because there's a there's a catch right there and if you slide the lid down on that catch you're going to either bend the catch or wear the lid out so always press the button um, when I see people opening it the wrong way I get pissed off so and that's the uh, very beautiful mainspring so that's the mainspring barrel this whole thing and that's the mainspring and I made a tool that, to open this up so I had a I made a little tool that you can put the two little uh, snake teeth in there and then turn it and then made the tool out of brass and punched in some steel pins so uh, and then made them the right dimension so I could open these hebdomas uh, backs because I've got one other right now I'm thinking do I have two one or two I got one other hebdomas so so anyway and I got it working as well so this is a uh, snap that back no problem um, and uh, that's it for today I'm gonna shut up because I said I was gonna shut up a few minutes ago but I didn't did I let me just put this in the background there you go 8.6 seconds per day for the Chinese watch who is the winner uh, not the Chinese watch the uh, Seiko prospect is the winner thanks for watching see you later